thank you very much for having me here. I also want to thank IUVA and, and UNESCO for the perfect organization of this day. Thank you so much. Very nicely organized. Um, I would all almost say now for something completely different, seeing a lot of UV technique. Um, I hope to show you a little bit about what's really happening uh, in the field and uh, a little bit our, about our experience with uh, our system that we made uh, using also UV as the uh, disinfectant uh, in that system. I'll tell you a little bit before we, we start because I can imagine you, you never heard of NADAP. Uh, we are a, a medium-sized company in the eastern part of Holland. Uh, we are a corporation since 49, uh, about 700 people working at NADAP with a yearly turnover of approximately 174 million euros. Uh, we started in 29 in, uh, uh, in Amsterdam, uh, by the way, and recently I did find this old drawing of the first uh, building that we hired. And it's interesting when you look to the title above the, the company, which says Nederlandse Cocaïnefabriek. Translated the Dutch cocaine factory, <laughs> and uh, so you can see how times are changing, <laughs> because in that time cocaine, I, I think Holland was one of the biggest uh, uh, producers of cocaine at that time. Maybe we still are at this time. I don't know. <laughs> but at that time, it was a, a regular medicine here in, in, in the Netherlands. And in the 20s, I think they stopped it uh, by using it. But uh, by coincidence, this was the uh, the old building from from Neda. Uh, we do a lot of other things besides uh, water-related products like RFID systems, like the system the tags on the clothing, uh, recognizing cows so that they are feeded automatically. Uh, we make some uh, parts uh, like uh, this product over here, which is the, the power outer which converts solar energy back to the grid, uh, etc. Um, I'm s uh, myself working within the group uh, uh, light controls and then especially uh, to drive the UV lamps. We have seen a lot of low pressure lamps, medium pressure lamps, but they all need to be powered with special uh, electronic uh, lamp drivers or ballasts. I, I like to uh, call them lamp drivers because ballast I think is a negative word. Um, just to show the, the, the type of products we are making and uh, now I'm doing something illegal because I, I in fact should not show you this picture but it's so interesting. It's uh, it's one of the biggest UV installations in the world. Uh, we did visit it last week during the IUVA conference in White Plains, and it was really uh, very interesting to see a huge drinking water plant using 12,000 UV lamps at 240 watts for a maximum capacity of 8.3 billion liters of water for uh, over 9 million people, inhabitants. And, and walking there, it was really, really impressive. And also interesting to see that all the water is flowing to New York by gravity. And, and we are very proud that we supplied the electronic units to drive those UV lamps. So that's why I show this picture. Uh, as said, we also do UV curing. So using the same technology with these lamps to dry inks. Uh, so there are no solvents, so which is also very uh, environmental friendly. Like uh, uh, when you have a floor, wooden floor, you can sand it you put on the UV curing inks and then just uh, with this machine you walk over it and the floor is cured and you can uh, use it again so it's a very quick system. And the same is nowadays used in all kind of big printing machines with inkjet printers and they uh, uh, inkjet the, the materials with uh, some inks and with a big UV lamp and you have to think of uh, 24,000 watts of uh, lamps they can cure the paint. I showed you also we, we do something in, in electronics for solar panels and we have more than 20 years experience making electronics to drive this UV lamp. Uh, we came to the idea if we throw this technology together we can maybe make or produce a nice piece of equipment to help the uh, developing countries in making uh, uh, clean water. And then of course you start with looking around and then you see there's a lot of publications uh, already and, and, and listening today I think there's not a technical problem in solving uh, a technical issue to solve this problem. It's more another type of, of problem because already in the end of the 90s, there were several solutions to uh, cope with that problem. And, you know, access to safe drinking water, and I fully agree, is, is a fundamental 
a fundamental human need and therefore a, a basic human right, as uh, Kofi Annan mentioned. But he said uh, access to safe water, and we've seen some pictures from, well, not all too clean water. This is the situation you sometimes find in, in, in this case, in, in the area of Rwanda. Uh, there are a lot of alternatives when you look around. We've already seen a lot of them uh, today, um, so we don't have to look too long to that. Uh, this is the product we designed, and uh, there's also a unit here installed, so I'm also happy to uh, show you a little bit more around after the presentations. And we're also happy that, uh, well, as I said, good designs get copied in the last 10 years. We have seen some units, and I think there's some resemblance with those two units, and uh, even uh, another piece of equipment. And I'm very happy to see that, that that's happening. The more ideas that there are available, I think the better it is. So we had some targets. Um, most of these targets were also uh, related from a World Health Organization presentation in, uh, I think, 2001 in uh, Australia, which says for uh, rural areas you need usage uh, of the present water sources. It should be a multi-barrier process. Uh, you need some kind of storage of water, could be limited. Uh, low cost, very important. And what is low cost? They said it should be below 10 US dollar per person per year. So that was a, a good target. It should be for transportation purpose, very easy to do. Um, you don't need a really technicians to, to do it, but uh, it should be easy technical education at the user's level, and it should be uh, easy to maintenance and to service. So these were the first sketches, and uh, on this side here, as usual, the best ideas uh, do exist during a reception with a nice glass of wine or a beer. And you see that's a coaster that I still made a picture of where the first design was sketched during a reception with a glass of beer. And we made some first sketches. And I think, Hank, these were the drawings I was referring to when I, you were the first one outside NADAP to see these drawings for the first setup of the, uh, the NEADA system. And then, of course, we built some models to see uh, if it would work. So this was the outcome of it. Important, we have a solar panel to power the whole system. It's about 80 watt uh, of electrical power. Um, and we have a, a UV lamp of 20 watts, so we have a lot of excess uh, power. And that's also needed uh, or used to power and load the standard car battery, which can be placed in the bottom of the unit. So you can also tap water during the night. Uh, important, first step is people just put in the water they are used to drink right now. The only thing is, before they drink it, they put it in the machine and they have it cleaned. First step is the uh, filtration by two filter bags, uh, 10 micron, 25 micron. They can just take it out, they wash it in the river and can put it back again so they can service it by themselves. Um, then we have a reservoir of about 100 liters of water. And then when you push the button, the water is flowing by gravity inside the unit through the reactor, which can be seen here. And then there's a valve in the unit that allows water to flow. As I said, cleaning of the back filters is very easy, uh, and they can do that locally. Uh, and this is, the, the, in fact, the, the, the brain of the unit together, built together with the UV lamp. The water is going uh, at the left side. It's the water input from the reservoir. Uh, you can see here that we have uh, an aluminum tube for sufficient reflection of the UV and also to seal the UV light from the plastic. Uh, as uh, Volker already mentioned, uh, there can be some uh, issues if you have the UV dose is also very near to the plastic parts. Then a control unit that holds all the electronics to con control it. And what's very important, we have a valve. Uh, so when there's a situation where the lamp is too old or the lamp is defective, or the uh, back filters are not in place, you can push the button, but we will not release water. So there's a control system built into the unit that will hold uh, the water release. So it's always, when the unit is tapping water, you know that uh, it's safe to, to drink it. Of course, you need a lot of uh, uh, manuals to, uh, uh, to in inform the people, and new distributors, buyers, they get just all this information, and they do a, a self-learning uh, system to make uh, uh, or get acquainted with the machine. Um, 
already, I think, one of the uh, uh, persons also made a remark on that. There's also a lot of testing going on, and we, we went to several institutes to do all the testing, like in, in Turkey and in India, and it's a nice thing that almost every country has its own institute and wants to test it again, and it's sometimes uh, interesting that you have to pay for it, and when you get the report, it seems like a copy of earlier made reports. No comments. So one of the first institutes was in, uh, in India to do the test because we also wanted to have some local tests, so we built 10 units and the first uh, four units were shipped to uh, India. And uh, within two weeks, we got a phone call, you have to come, uh, the units don't work anymore. Hmm, what's the problem? Any ideas? Uh, monkeys. Monkeys were very fond on the, uh, some of the plastic parts of the unit. So we had the back of the unit uh, right here, but the cables come uh, to the electronic units. We just had to make an, a metal plate in front of it so that the monkeys could not reach the delicious plastic parts that they want. But therefore, you need to go to those countries to do those tests. Also, in our factory, we did put a, a unit outside just to see what would happen during uh, some low temperatures. And then, of course, all the results of the several test houses, and one of them, uh, UNESCO, is also there with a, a very nice report. You can download them also on our web pages. But we have all these things nicely tested and documented. So once again, all the reports that are available. And uh, we see that, and, and that's what we always say, that we have a three-log uh, system uh, available. So these targets, we think, uh, nicely met. Um, one thing still to, to, uh, to mention uh, on costs, I think that Carl mentioned it's the price of the complete unit. It's a little bit difficult because every country has its own import duties, and import duties can be 0 or 2 percent or 36 percent. So the price is very depending on, uh, on the local prices. But that's always the expensive price. But I also have a low price to mention to you. If you supply water to three or maximum 400 people, and you can use this unit, this machine, for eight, nine years, then it's calculated down to approximately 1.5 US dollar per person per year. This is well below the targets of the World Health Organization of 10 US dollar per person per year. So we have to do some further testing by building, well, uh, the first 20, 30 units and put them in the field at uh, Brazil, India, Africa, and China. Even the, the oldest units are still in operation in Brazil, now almost for eight, nine years, still doing fine. You have to replace the lamp, and sometimes you have to replace the filters, but the units are still in operation. I'll just show you a few pictures, because I think the picture tells it much more than a lot of uh, uh, text. Uh, sometimes transportation is very difficult, uh, but sometimes they assemble the unit in a small boat and then bring it to the location. This is in the north of Brazil. One of the problems is that during the tide, the water will go up for two and a half meters. So you can imagine that uh, animals come and drink the water at the water side. And most of the time they leave something behind also. So the water is very polluted over there. And people drink the water from this river. There you see that the Nayada system was installed and within one hour it was operational. And uh, you also can see that in some schools the units are used. Uh, on the left side you see on the school they're tapping the water and they put the uh, solar panel on the roof. Uh, and also here you can see that they put the unit in a special uh, area so that the water is also kept a little bit cooler than uh, when it is put just uh, outside. And uh, this, is, uh, this uh, nice lady I think is one of our <clears throat> development team members because she did discover a very important thing because we had made a, a nice button on the front so when you push the button the water starts flowing <clears throat> but you have to keep to push the button so you can see and I think that's over there she did put a rope around the unit because she makes the water for the whole village about uh, 200 people every day so she said, I don't want to push the button for one hour. I'll put a rope on it. So we said, okay, we have to change the software. Pushing once, water will flow. Pushing the other one, 
uh, second time it will stop. So we learned a lot from this lady. Also, the first, one of the first units was installed in Tanzania on a school, <coughs> and there we discovered that on schools, that's a perfect place to use this unit. We, uh, one organization donated this unit in uh, Tanzania on the school, and we learned that after two weeks, 40, 40% 40 more children attended school within two weeks because they got rid of the uh, chronic uh, diarrhea. And most of the children had to walk for 30, 40 minutes. <coughs> and when they are sick, they don't walk to school. So very simple solution. And nowadays, they bring a bottle and take it home to their parents. So their parents drink that water. And nowadays, the neighbors ask, can you also bring us a bottle? So now from the bottom up, people get interested in clean water. Some more pictures, and I said education is also very important to, uh, to show the people how the unit should be operated. And also education. Here you see a picture from Africa where the, the people are, are telling how to use the machine, uh, to wash your hands, and to keep also the, the, the bottles clean that they are using. <coughs> um, this is an uh, interesting location in uh, Rwanda where the Soroptimist donated uh, about 20 units, and uh, they are all installed at schools. And you see that in some locations they use it also to collect rainwater in a, in a tank and let it rest there for a time, and then put it into the Nayada automatically, also by, by gravity. Um, we also see that sometimes, and they got uh, these questions a lot, uh, what's vulnerable? Well, if they steal the solar panel, that, then, then you have a problem, of course, because then you don't have the power. So that's why sometimes you see a big cage around these units. <coughs> also in China, and of course that should be opened very officially, but these are the people that really matter, is say, on the schools where they drink the water. Especially in the, in the southern part of uh, China, in the mountains, where they have five minutes electricity per day. And they get, once a week they get the water in big containers, and it's uh, not that clean. Uh, India, you see that unit also is uh, nicely packed in a, in, a, in a cage. Any idea why? Cows. Cows will rub their necks on the machine, and then they will destroy it. So they have to put a fence around it. Yeah, you, you always learn. And again, also in India, a lot of education on... What is clean water? What should the people do? Even in Afghanistan. So more than 750 peop, uh, units are installed at this moment in several countries. <coughs> and also uh, many nice reports on the effects of uh, units. And we did win some prizes with it. It's nice. Most important thing is the message that in one of the children's hospitals, uh, in, on average two children uh, died per month due to bad uh, water in that hospital. And after they installed the Nayada system, uh, it went down to zero. And that was just because of the, the water-related problems they had in the hospital. And of course, uh, the IUVA uh, Green Award we did win last year. Thanks once again. But these things really matter. Like the schools, 40% more children going to school and get their education. Like in Ghana, that uh, no children died anymore in, in these hospitals when they used clean water. And then um, we also got a question from, from Hana, from the, one of the ministers, uh, can you build a bigger system? And then we said, well, we, we can combine them. And together with the uh, uh, ministry, uh, NADAP, and some local uh, company, Melpool, uh, we had to prove that the Niara concept could be working uh, and also have water transportation to that village itself. And if this would be working, then they would install in a, a few hundreds of villages around that area. As here's an overview, the, we had a, 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 a pipe uh, going through the, through the river, and normally the, the women uh, would collect the water every day. So we now have uh, having a, a solar-powered water pump pumping from the river the water to the village into t big uh, uh, tanks with some valves, and then dist uh, distributing the uh, uh, water to three Nayada systems. Uh, on the left, the, the, the water intake, then the, the pipe 
Italian pipe for about uh, a little bit over one mile to the village. There you see how uh, the uh, installation was built, two big tanks uh, elevated so that the water could uh, be taken off by gravity again. And here the installation was, uh, was ready and you see that this village, about 2,700 people, uh, use it only for the, the drinking water uh, every day and the installation uh, worked perfectly. So then we said, okay, we have proven it, so shall we also continue with the other villages, but then the real problem comes. Uh, it was time for elections. The minister had the elections, was elected, and we never heard from her again. <laughs> and, but we showed that it is possible to set up a sustainable, self-supporting drinking water supply units. And uh, also the women had more time to, to do their work and don't only collect the water. Um, still, we, we run into some issues on regulations uh, locally, and uh, we got a lot of questions about uh, removal of, of chemicals like uh, arsenic, in Bangladesh, for example, and, but that these could also be add-on units uh, afterwards. Um, just to show you what happened recently is that also this Niara system, because it can be uh, used very quickly or in, insta installed very quickly, is uh, early August there was a big earthquake in China, in the Yunnan area, uh, and they had several of these uh, uh, camps where on average 1,200 to 1,500 people uh, are living for a moment. And we did flew in uh, three Nayaras uh, from our a Chinese uh, distributor. You can see how they are unpacked. It's very simple. They were assembled within an hour and then carried out to the location where they are using it. And now these three Nayaras are supplying clean water to these camps. And uh, because during the earthquake also some infrastructure of the, the water pipes and the water factory was damaged. So that takes approximately one to one and a half year before, before that's reinstalled again and, uh, and they have clean water again. So also this shows very nicely that we can do it very quickly. And uh, looking to the children, it's always good to see that they are very happy with these uh, installations. And I think that, that one of the previous speaker already mentioned, it's it's very typically that uh, people that have most of the money, they pay less for the water, as it's indicated. Um, and also with this uh, Niada system, we are uh, very near the lowest uh, cost to produce clean drinking water. Um, sometimes you get the message, well, in developing countries, people don't want to pay for water because they are not used to pay for water. And I, I said, oh, I don't agree because when I was in India, I opened the newspaper and I saw this, this message, water thieves. Well, if you can't make money with water, this water thieves would not exist. So they just drill holes in the existing uh, lines, they steal the water and they sell it about one kilometer down the road. And they make for uh, that area reasonable money, like 200 rupees per day, just by stealing the water and adding a lot of damage to the, to the water system. And, and I think this is one of the topics I, I missed today because we have fine solutions to, uh, and technical solutions to make clean water. And I think the industry is ready to make new designs, LEDs or whatever. But it's more the politics that keep us down in, in doing really something. Sometimes they ask me, what's the biggest problem in, in getting these systems into the market? And I said, unfortunately, it's corruption because that's the biggest problem we are facing. Um, as I was preparing the, pre uh, the, the, the presentation, I also looked and saw the first picture and, and looking to Mexico, I was really interested in seeing how they are progressing. And, and then I was really shocked because I think, well, the industry was there also very quickly, but not the water industry, but the industry of uh, sweetened soda drinks. And uh, in some areas, and I don't know if that's true, but uh, it seems to be that uh, soft drinks are cheaper and more accessible than water. And it seems that Mexico is the largest consumer of soft drinks, uh, average about 163 liters per year of sodas. Uh, that means obese and especially diabetic is a big problem or getting a big problem in, in Mexico. And uh, this is a picture from a, 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 a movie I saw on YouTube and I can say, uh, to people have a look at it. It's uh, called Sweet Agony. 
where you can see that even uh, babies uh, get their drinks, not water, but Coca-Cola. So this is disturbing me. But then again, I said, well, here in the Western world, we were not much better, because this is an ad from about the 50s and the 60s. So I don't know, maybe it's repeating itself. But we are happy we have some Nayada systems in, in Mexico. Uh, we hope we get some more there, especially on the schools. You know, I think that the Mexican uh, now increased the taxes on sodas. 10% more have to pay when there's some sugar in, in the, the thing. And they also try to get better and more accessible clean water at the schools. And yeah, to see the news, I think in, in Holland we are improving because uh, last year, 2013, we had uh, 58 million liters of soda and orange juices less and more water sold. So that should be good. So what do we really need? Um, one of the things is if you have these kind of installations in, in Rwanda or wherever, you need local, what I call devoted partners that are really want to keep the system working and, and operating. Um, uh, you need some backup and support by government, not uh, installing it and then when the elections are gone, walk away again. This is a big problem to us, especially for the industry. Uh, import duties is a problem. As I said, in, I think in Brazil, about 36% import duties. That makes the system very expensive for those people. Important is local education. We heard that before also today. And I'm also really uh, anxious to see simple and reliable solutions, but because if you are far away in, and you have to drive for five hours into the jungle and you are missing a spare part, that's always a problem. Um, we need to convince the big NGOs that also simple solutions can uh, bring some help uh, to, uh, to the, uh, this, this problem. And, and the last thing is we all need to have a lot of patience. We are now working on this system for eight, nine years now and still uh, we are alive, but uh, we hope that we really can make a difference. I said a local partner is very important because we had one site where the one unit was donated and we did find the unit back somewhere in the corner just with a lot of dust and not using it anymore, which is, I think, a pity. But this is one of the biggest problems. You need some people there that on, on, at the local site that can help out. Um, and, and as I said, uh, the government, uh, we install the units over there. They want to go to, to several villages to do the same. But uh, she had won the elections, so she was happy, and we heard nothing anymore. So that, that's also a big problem. Uh, like the Red Cross said, well, Nayada, it's a nice thing, but nah, it's not, nothing. We, we can't use it. Uh, and I fully disagree with them. Uh, I had a, a person from Haiti that said, um, we will get some new water supplies, but it will approximately take one year before it will ready, so a lot of people will have died in between. And the Nayara could be, or the small UV systems could be a, a perfect solution for the time in between. Education, as I said, it, it's so important to have the right education for people. Like here, the, 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 the girl from, from Mexico, so filling the bottle and taking it home again. Uh, but also education here in Holland, like the, where we are here today, it's very important. And I did find this, I think there's still a lot of work to do here, because I find, did find this uh, a worksheet, a question, about a briefly, to briefly explain what hard water is. Can anybody explain what hard water is? This was the answer. <laughs> so there's still a lot of education to do. Once again, I, I think that for the water uh, problem, to, to summarize it, is that we sometimes experience more an economical water scarcity rather than a physical water uh, scarcity. And uh, there's a lot of politics coming to it. And I'm also convinced that every dollar invested in water and sanitation yields an estimate of $7 worth of productivity. So that's why it's so important that we get this thing done. And with that, I would like to thank you once again. Uh, my colleagues and all the people that worked together with it and uh, if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them and feel free to come stop by and have a look at the machine and touch it. Yeah, a few questions for Tony.
not on a, on a, uh, uh, on a basis that we really did some investigations. The only thing is we heard from the, the school and the, the, the guy in Rwanda who's uh, uh, taking care of about 20 schools where the Nayara is, um, that they are very happy. They have approximately 40% more children attending school after the unit was installed. Uh, there's one school still, they're using the chlorine system, and they begged also to get this machine because it's just more simpler to use the Nayada system because he wants to get rid of buying all the, 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 the uh, uh, chemical stuff, uh, seeing how simple the UV system would be. There's not really an investigation on how much effect we have. It's more going back to the schools and, and ask, them, uh, ask them what the experience are. might have one good technology, but if you drink four glasses of good water treated in one glass just out of the river because that's what you're used to and you don't realize what you're doing, that could also just compromise all the good stuff that you've done. You know, that you but so. The nice thing is that the effect that we heard is that now uh, the children bring the, uh, the water home, their parents start to drink it, and now the neighbors want to have that water because they see that they spend uh, less uh, cost on, on medicines and have more time to go to work. That's good, but also the uh, helmet eggs are uh, protected by this, this filtering, so there's a, a combination. Um, we have done a lot of investigation on the type of filters because we wanted to achieve the five to six liters per minute. So more back filters in it would slow down. Uh, you, you also can see that these filters are just much bigger than you would expect. It's just to get more water through it. Uh, and if they are in use, uh, there's a big difference between if there's lot, lots of clay in, in the water, they have to wash them more regular than when the water is clean. Exactly, and that's from the industry, we think we've made something and we just look to the end results and then we see that it helps. And we, it's not the total solution, but I think if we solve more than 95% of the problem, we will be very happy. We are working now with some uh, organizations that want to spend some money uh, on it, and we are looking to some distributors that can take care of the installation, in, like in Rwanda and in some other countries, because there's more and more getting money released for this uh, system, but it's very, very slowly. And once again, you need to have local people to, uh, to do that work. Uh, so scaling up, uh, we can do villages with two or three or four or five uh, Neara systems, like the uh, project in China where we have distributed three of these uh, units for about 1,500 people. Um, so just putting more units to it. And we're also thinking of to make a small UV unit uh, powered by a solar system that can be used on five systems. But again, you see that you already can buy systems for maybe 60, 70 US dollars. So uh, I think there's a lot of this equipment already available. This machine is really for uh, small communities, uh, schools, and this kind of, of size. Yeah, but we are just looking to other standard products that are out of, uh, on the market. As I said, we, we are a, a company that, that designs electronic products. Um, this is more a spin-off of technology that we find interesting to do. And um, further developments in, in, in water, we should go to our customers that make the water systems, like companies like, like Burson, because these are the experts to do water treatment uh, systems. 
Um, so if we would add on the uh, Arsenic system, we would buy that in the market and uh, redirect it to them so that you have uh, a special filter in series with an AR system. Because one of the problems is, uh, and you know, we got a lot of questions. The questions to add something to the Nayara on the functionality. Do you know what the question is I get most to add to the Nayara? Any idea? No. Can you put in a USB plug so that I can uh, charge my uh, telephone? Yeah. No, no water, but they have a phone. Well, we always said that we, we want to focus on bacteriolic uh, solution with this system and any other problems needs to be solved separately. Uh, so we know that in, in, in Bangladesh, the arsenic is, is a big problem. And then you say, well, we don't have a solution or a, a low-cost solution right now because it's already very difficult to get this machine in the market. So we don't want to add a lot of options to it and then have five machines that we don't sell. You know, it's it's... Therefore, we, we really rely on the local partners where we uh, operate with because from, from the Netherlands, we cannot look in all to the, all those countries. So it, it makes a big difference on, on the local partners that we, uh, that we have because they have to inform us about the, the location. The only thing we can do is this is the specification of the product and it could be helpful in these kind of situations. Around to 3,500 US dollars, as Carl showed. Yeah. But once again, it's depending on, on, on the country. systems in and we can have a, a 20 30 minute uh, panel discussion